Original Doubting Thomas. Uh, the one and only. It's probably about the only thing you know about me, except that I was an apostle. How I came by that nickname? Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Jesus was on earth for about 40 days after his death. The Bible gives us precious little information about that time period. Most of that information is found in the Gospels. However, one passage in 1 Corinthians says, Jesus appeared to more than 500 people at the same time. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke I'm only mentioned in the list of the apostles. John calls me. Thomas, also known as Didymus. Since Didymus means twin, you can infer that I was known to have a twin. John mentions me four other times, two before the resurrection, two after. First time John mentions me is when Jesus was headed to bring back his friend Lazarus from the dead. I knew that it was the beginning of the end of Jesus' career, probably his life, because he was headed into the places that were controlled by his enemies, the Pharisees. In a show of bravery, I told the other apostles, let us also go that we may die with him. And we did go with him. Second time John mentions me was on the night of the Last Supper. Jesus said he was going away and that he'd come back to get us. When Jesus ended that statement by saying, we knew the place where he was going, I was mystified, had no idea what he was talking about. Where was he going? I, I blurted it out. Lord, we, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus replied with some of his most famous words. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Third and fourth time John mentions me will become apparent as we go through the rest of my story. Uh, after he was resurrected, Jesus' first appearance was to Mary Magdalene. Ironic. I guess he was rewarding her for her faithfulness. While well, we uh, apostles had deserted him on the last night and day of his life, she had served him in his life and in his death. I was glad he gave her special recognition. I was also glad that he appeared to the other women that had served him in the same way. His next appearance was that same day on the road to Emmaus, where he talked with Cleopas and his companion. They were about seven miles from Jerusalem when Jesus appeared. But they didn't recognize him, even though he talked with them. And Jesus told them all the things about himself in the Old Testament, and boom, they knew who he was. They rushed back to Jerusalem to tell the apostles the good news. They arrived that evening, uh, Ten of the apostles had already heard the good news from Mary and the women, and they knew that Jesus had already appeared to Peter. One apostle heard the news, he found another apostle, and they found another, and scattered, hidden, all of us. But now we apostles gathered together, behind locked doors, of course, because we were still afraid of the Jewish leaders. All 11 remaining apostles except one, me. I'd gone to hide with my twin and his family. They were staying on the Mount of Olives and were preparing to go back home after Passover was finished. We were among the poor people, so I wasn't worried that the leaders would mistake my brother for me. Nobody knew where I was. I didn't hear the good news of Jesus' resurrection. The apostles, they felt safe behind their locked doors. Nobody could get inside without them knowing, and nobody. Except Jesus. He just appeared, stood there among them. Peter once walked on water. Yeah, this time he nearly walked on air. Everyone else was freaked out, scared out of their wits. They thought they saw a ghost. Peace be with you, Jesus said. Then he held out his hands and feet for them to see the nail holes. 
showed them the gash in his side where he'd been pierced with a sword. And they were overjoyed. They couldn't believe it was their Lord, so he solved the problem like any good Jew, uh, with food. <laughs> he ate a piece of fish. Later, he blessed them again and breathed the Holy Spirit on them. He said that they have the power to forgive sins or not to forgive them. And then he left. The apostles searched everywhere for me, finally found me. Uh, they couldn't wait to share the good news, but I would have none of it. I told them that I would not believe that Jesus had risen from the dead unless I touched the holes in his hands and sighed. They... They understood my reticence to believe. They understood that the disappointment would be too much for me to take if they couldn't prove it to be true. We stayed together, the apostles, for the next several days. Every night, in the same house, behind locked doors. Exactly one week after the Lord had risen, still behind locked doors, praying to God, Jesus appeared among us, just as he had done the first time. Again, peace be with you, just as he had the first time. It's this time he walked over to me. Reach here with your finger and feel my hands. And reach here with your hand and thrust it into my side and stop doubting, but believe. I went to my knees. My Lord and my God. Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Those who don't see me and believe are blessed too. Now you know how I got my nickname. Doubting Thomas. Shortly after this appearance, we disciples hurried to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus told us to go. We worshipped him, but some still doubted. I was not one of those doubters. And while we were in Galilee, we spent a lot of time away from Jesus. I don't know what all he was doing during this time period, but there were many times we were left alone. The third time we saw Jesus was on the lake below the mountain. Now, Peter was feeling down because he kept thinking about how he had denied Jesus on the last night of his life. Peter decided to relieve his anxiety the same way men have always done, go fishing get in the middle of a lake and think about nothing for a while. Well, sounded like a good idea, so Nathaniel, James, John, two others, and I decided to go with him. Zebedee loaned us a boat, and we were on our way. And like happens to many fishermen, we fished all night and caught nothing. Nothing. And I know, I know, we were fishing to get away from it all, but we were still perturbed that we caught nothing. After all, Peter, James, and John made their livings fishing on that lake before they followed Jesus. As we rowed toward the shore, we saw a man standing there on the edge. Dawn was just breaking, so it was still too dark to recognize people on the shore. We heard, friends, didn't you catch any fish? And Peter was like, how does he know? He wanted to curse at him like he would have in the old days. Instead, we just said, no. Well, throw your nets on the right side of your boat. You'll find some. Now, Peter was, uh, yeah, about to explode. Not only had he failed to catch fish, here was some nobody on the shore trying to tell him an expert how to catch fish. At the same time it took for him to decide to go ballistic or not, the nets hit the water on the right side of the boat. Nathaniel and I had thrown them in. We weren't fishermen. We didn't know it was foolish to throw the nets in one more time. He snickered as the nets sank, but uh, his eyes bugged out when we couldn't haul the nets up because they were buckling from the overload of fish. And finally, John said, so quiet, uh, it is the Lord. 
splash. I mean, not even a second later. It was Peter in the water, frantically swimming to shore to see Jesus. And Peter helped us drag the nets in, where there were 153 large fish. Jesus had already built a charcoal fire, cooked our breakfast and ate with him. It, it, imagine that. Seven apostles and Jesus sitting around a campfire, eating fresh fish. Dawn breaking over the Sea of Galilee. I can still smell it. Hear it. And the peace. And I never wanted that moment to end. Especially not the way that it did. Simon, son of John, said Jesus, looking at Peter, using his first name. Do you unconditionally love me with deep devotion much more than all these things? Peter squirmed as he sat on a log. We all squirmed for him. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you like a brother. Feed my lambs. Simon, son of John, do you unconditionally love me with deep devotion? Again, Peter squirmed like a kid caught stealing a cookie. Yes, Lord, you know I love you like a brother. Take care of my sheep. Simon, son of John, do you love me like a brother? Busted. Yeah, Peter knew he was busted. Jesus knew that Peter wasn't willing to commit himself wholeheartedly, but Jesus also knew that Peter soon would. Lord, you know all things. I love you like a brother. Feed my sheep. With that, we all knew that Jesus had forgiven Peter for his three denials and had reinstated him as leader of our group. I mean, Jesus did so many things during his life and resurrection that all the books in the world couldn't tell of him. John and the other gospel writers wrote down what they could, and it was enough that anyone who believes them can believe and have life in his name. During the 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus appeared to over 500 people. Uh, many of whom lived for decades afterward and were willing to tell anybody who would listen about Jesus. As Jesus taught me, though, those who are witnesses for Jesus without seeing them are blessed too. You, that's you, you are blessed every time you are a witness for Jesus. One of the last things Jesus said in Galilee, we were on the mountain where he told us to go. It was there that Jesus gave instructions to all Christians for all ages. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And there's never a clear instruction to eyewitnesses and to you, the blessed believe without having seen. <laughs>